our first thought for this morning it goes to an illustration that is out of that movie City Slickers. Perhaps you remember that film which featured Billy Crystal, the comedian, and Jack Palance, who had been the cowboy western star. That was the movie based on a bunch of city slickers signing up for a dude ranch cattle drive. And of course, uh, Curly, the character played by Jack Palance, he was the veteran cowboy, full of experience, confidence, and cowboy charisma. In the middle of the movie, the, there came this, this conversation between Mitch, Billy Crystal's comic character, and Curly, Jack Palance, the serious character. There, there came this uh, kind of heart-to-heart uh, -heart moment between the cowboy and the city slicker. And so it begins with Curly saying, do you know what the secret of life is? And Mitch replies, uh, no. And Curly, he says, it's just one thing. And Mitch, well, what's the one thing? Curly says, that's what you have to figure out. What this morning, we're working on figuring out the one thing. And some of us may be saying, oh, Pastor Scott, okay, we're, we're in the middle of Christianity. We're in the middle of Sunday service. We know the obvious one thing, it is Jesus Christ. Yes, A plus answer, go to the top of the class. Remember, however, for Peter and the other disciples, this is their first quote set of Sunday school classes with Jesus. They're at the beginning. They're at the figured out phase for the very first time. And so it is Jesus is turning to them to see if they are catching on. And he's saying, who do, you, who do the people say the Son of Man is? And the disciples come back with the different ideas. Well, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, one of the prophets, Jeremiah, perhaps. Jesus asks again, but who do you say that I am? My disciples, who do you say I am? It is Peter who speaks up and says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Then Jesus hushes them up and says, okay, you've got it figured out. You figured out the main thing. You figured out your faith declaration here. But don't tell anybody yet. It's not time. This passage is all about declaring who Jesus Christ really is and also understanding what is our one thing in Jesus Christ. And it is certainly uh, that Jesus is the Messiah. Another illustration about the faith journey and figuring out the main thing comes to us from the life story of Christian writer C.S. Lewis. He's from the British Isles. If you have read the Chronicles of Narnia or seen any of the movies, this is that author. C.S. Lewis. Uh, in his book, Surprised by Joy, he talks about his faith journey. When he was in what we would call elementary school age, his mother was diagnosed with cancer, and within a year or two, she died from cancer. C.S. Lewis admits it was a very, very painful time for his family, a father trying to comfort two sons, and it didn't always go well. He talks about he was sent off to English boarding school. He didn't really enjoy that kind of British education system. He admits that between his prep school and his college years, he had been moved into uh, the fashionable atheism of that time. He did have his questioning God issues with his mother dying from cancer and uh, the influence of some teachers and professors who were skeptics of Christianity and religion in general, that all fed into him being pretty much uh, an atheist in his thinking and his attitudes. As C.S. Lewis moved on in his uh, career, he was offered uh, a fellowship at Oxford, and that means you start out as a teacher's assistant. 
So in his, his early years teaching at Oxford, he was surrounded by a group of scholars who had a great influence on him. Two of them were uh, Owen Barfield, a professor and also a Christian writer. Another one of the professors was J.R.R. Tolkien. You may have heard of his books, The Hobbit and then The Lord of the Rings series. These were these uh, fantasy uh, novels with, with great, great deal of adventure. They were filled with symbolism of good and evil and the work of the good triumphing over evil. That is J.R.R. Tolkien, and he was on the faculty at the same time C.S. Lewis was teaching at Oxford. And so it is, Lewis talks about the influence of these other teachers, as well as some other friends that he was making at that time. Then C.S. Lewis talks about the point in his life where he realized he had made the change from his atheism to Christianity. He basically says on a Sunday afternoon, he was invited out to a picnic. So in the morning, he got onto a motorbike for a ride out to the picnic ground. He left an atheist. He came back on that motorbike, a Christian. At some point in the afternoon, it dawned on him. I am like these other Christian friends. I am a Christian. He wrote down those thoughts in his autobiography called Surprised by Joy. And after that day of conversion experience, his writing went from just writing things about English and Greek and Roman heroes his writing shifted into the arena of Christianity and he began to publish both Christian novels and Christian nonfiction works. In addition to the Chronicles of Narnia, he would go on to write Mere Christianity, of course, Surprised by Joy. He would write The Four Loves and many other works. He tended to publish about one book a year, if not two books a year, all of them under the umbrella of a Christian author. And and so it is we tell his story because that was his life journey, figuring out his one thing, figuring out Jesus is the Messiah. This man from Nazareth is the son of God. Now for us, we've all, all I think, at some point made that discovery for ourselves that Jesus is the number one thing. He is the main thing for our life. And yet it's good from time to time to do our remembering to pay attention to who and what it means to be saying, yes, Jesus, you are the son of God. You are the Messiah. We look towards the Christmas reading from Isaiah 9, verse 6. You may remember when we read, and the authority rests upon his shoulder. He is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. We look at that passage to do a refresher course on just who is this Jesus, the Messiah. So with the authority resting upon his shoulders, that is telling us he's God in person. What more do we need to know about authority? Jesus is this appearance of God in person. And so this gives Jesus teaching its authority. It's God speaking. It is God talking through Jesus. With wonderful counselor, this talks about the listening that God does. Through Jesus' ear listening to us in prayer, he becomes the counselor, the listener, to our faith questions. This is how Jesus is listening to our prayers. And this is why we say in Jesus' name at the conclusion of our prayers. We move on to the part of uh, Jesus' job description as mighty God. This talks about uh, the power of Jesus, his healing power, his miracle power. Jesus gave sight to the blind. He gave hearing to the deaf. Uh, for those afflicted by demons, he set them spiritually free. He cast out the evil and the darkness that was in their lives. Jesus came as the Messiah, as mighty God, with the power of God to heal us and to help us. And then in this description of who Jesus is, we have everlasting father. The father part, it speaks to Jesus being a part of God's parenting. Uh, Jesus came more as a brother to us in that human form. 
Jesus came as family, letting us know about his father. And so we hear about Jesus as family member. And there's then, of course, the everlasting part. This is an everlasting family. God as our loving parent, Jesus as our loving brother. As we connect our life to Jesus Christ, we have this everlasting relationship. It never ends. And then, of course, Prince of Peace. The history of Israel had been one of conflict for many centuries. There was the Assyrian invasion, followed by troubles with the, the Egyptians. Then came the Babylonian invasion. As the Babylonians lost strength, there came the Persians, then the Greeks, then the Romans. There's the whole litany of foreign powers that would conquer Israel and take over the Holy Land uh, century after century. I would not be surprised if the people of Israel had a whole lot of combat and occupation fatigue. I'm sure that they were very tired of seeing soldiers from other countries march up and down their streets. To hear that Jesus is the Prince of Peace would be such a blessing to them. They had not had their own kingdom since the day of, of King Solomon. So it is with the arrival of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, this, this just gave them a, a sense of, of uh, all, all this great burden of conflict being resolved. In the same way for us in the 21st century, we have our problems in our time. We have our, our conflicts, our difficulties. We also rejoice at hearing this good news that Jesus is our Prince of Peace, that that is also in his job description. We could all use more peace, more healing uh, for conflict. So it is we come back to our main question, anything to declare. Who do we say Jesus is? And we say again, we remember the Sabbath and keep it holy by saying again, Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. This is our number one thing. This answers the question, what is the secret of life? Jesus Christ is our number one thing. Everything else begins from that point. Amen.